Okay, so the best way to get rid of a bad law is to strictly enforce it. And once you do that, the people then see that this is a bad law and we need to do away with it. But upstream from the laws that are enforced by the police are the lawmakers, the legislators. And upstream from them is the culture of people that those politicians pander to in order to receive the votes. And they only enact and create the laws that the people who elected them would have them create. So, the best way to get rid of a bad law is to strictly enforce it and go upstream from that a couple steps. The best way to get rid of a bad culture is to allow it to thrive and flourish until the point where it comes out in the open. It's like allowing a, a little bacteria under your arm that just kind of really doesn't do much. It just kind of stinks, you know, like those dirty hippies. Allow it to flourish to the point where it becomes a flesh-eating bacteria then we got to do something about it. I want to take you back, way back. Wasn't that far ago. When Antifa was running the streets, remind you of the Las Vegas attack, James, Com Jim, James Comey, FBI director, James Clapper, CIA director, I want to say John Brennan, I think he was the former State Department. Anyway, Nancy Pelosi's driver was a spy from China, the same chauffeur she had had for 20 years. The Las Vegas shooting was a lot like the Jussie Smollett. It was an attempt to elicit a reaction from the public to stir up a civil war or something thereof the likes thereof, because it was done at a venue that was the demographic of Trump supporters right after the election. These are the forces we're up against. Draining the swamp isn't just lock her up. It's a globalist swamp. There is a deep state in every country around the world, and I've just named off some of the key players. FBI director, CIA director, that are still talking heads on CNN, James Clapper. <clears throat> In order to get everyone on the same page that there is a swamp and that it does need drained, what's happening now is the Hegelian dialectic or dialectical materialism that presents the problem to the public. We all need to see that it is a problem in order to get a reaction from all of us equally to demand that the solution be implemented and then they can move forward with draining the swamp. Arresting high profile people from every institution imaginable, from churches to colleges. Remember when Antifa was running the streets and it was a college professor who got caught under one of those little black masks swinging a bike lock and hitting people in the head with a bike lock, cracking skulls? So that's not just the rebellious youth calling themselves Antifa with their ideology and, and zealousness. That is the institution itself fomenting that type of rebellious ideology of the young, altruistic, who thinks they can make a better world, but first they have to destroy this one. Anyway. In order to get rid of a bad law, the way to get rid of a bad law is to strictly enforce it. <clears throat> Go upstream from that law is the lawmakers, and upstream from them is the public who demands they create the laws that they create. So the best way to get rid of a bad law is to strictly enforce it. The best way to get rid of a bad culture is to allow it to thrive and flourish, and that's what's happening right now. This is the extraction from the Petri dish. The cleansing of the consciousness or culture. Culture is just consciousness as expressed through a group of people in their actions and behavior. And so in the Petri dish, rocking that cradle of love, distillation process to remove the impurities in whiskey. When you distill the whiskey, it gets stronger and stronger when you remove the impurities or those particles that are not alcohol. Anyway, distillation 
of the Petri dish, of the culture within the Petri dish, ultimately equals a consciousness separation of wheat and chaff. But we have to let this go far enough. So what they've done was they loaded the New World Order machine with blanks. And they activated every single program under the sun. Everyone was given the orders to activate and do your part to implement this New World Order. Most of whom never thought they would get this far. They did their little part and said, okay, yeah, yeah, your New World Order, I'll, I'll help you. And they assumed it was a pipe dream you'd never get around to implementing, at least not in my lifetime. So I'll go ahead and do my little part. Until the day came when suddenly these uh, training drill exercises went live. And they're like, no, we're going all the way with this one. That's why every country in the world is cooperating with the CV cooties. Except for a few. Again, because this is a globalist swamp that needs drained in every country, within every institution of that country, from their educational institutions, to their religious institutions, to government, law enforcement, etc. All of their plans have been activated, because in order to know who's who, you got to draw them out into the open. It's a pincer attack. When you have a valley here with trees on both sides, you send a few of your troops down in through the valley, see where the shots are fired from in the trees, and then you know where the enemy location is. You have to get them to pull their trigger, fire their weapon, reveal their location. You will know them by their fruits. And so in this process where they activated the New World Order machinery to get us all to know this is what you were up against, and by the time it's all over, you'll be able to see exactly what you were in for, and they weren't going to load it with blanks. They were going to take it all the way and send you marching into the ovens. But until then, we'll get their plans to march you into the ovens in full effect with blanks that they've loaded into the chamber to fire at you with the CV cooties. In order to get everyone on the same page that, yeah, this is a problem and we need to do something about it. Otherwise, they are going to be marching us into the ovens. So at this point, it would seem that we got to let their plans to implement their new world order get 90% of the way before we put a stop to it. In order that all those fence sitters... Shall I, shan't I, continue and go forward with this? I never thought we'd get to the day where they'd actually try to implement this pipe dream of theirs. I just kind of signed off on the toe tags and called it COVID or whatever I had to do along the way. Many of those fence sitters are going to have to decide, do you really follow through with action? And that's the only way that you draw them out from their hiding positions is to give each one of them a choice. And the reason we need to get it 90% finished to where they're almost locked in with their new world order. Which means at that point, many of the fence sitters will say, okay, I'm in. And get on the battlefield. And like I said, God has to wait until everyone gets on the battlefield to push the button and do away with the 10% of the evil wicked and the 80% of the mushy middle who are going to have to go along with them. Because it is not the power and pervasiveness of evil that allows it to thrive. It's the good men and women who do nothing, so they are going to have to be eliminated as well. But when it's all said and done, we will then live in a culture of consciousness that allows those like ourselves to thrive. And if you are a conscious human being, you know it because of the contrast between yourself and the other people when you look around and you can see that most of them are either intellectually inferior they're either unwilling or unable to see what you see and say it. They're either not smart enough to see it or not courageous enough to say it. Either way, if you have a higher level of consciousness, you know it. Especially in these times where the division is happening between the no's and the no-nots. And you can see it by the mask on their face. I said that I would be the guy at the entryway checking credentials. My job's, my work's all cut out for me. You got a mask? You're out of here. So, this is the distillation process of the Petri dish of consciousness that we are in. And culture is being separated. 
allowed to thrive in places like, you know, Seattle, Washington, and other places where not only will those cultures be allowed to thrive, but the underlying hidden hand of power will be allowed to and triggered to and activated and forced to make its move. We are drawing them out. We are calling, we are choosing the time and place of the battle. Okay? Remember the Las Vegas shooting? There is a reason that that got short-circuited. Because it was meant to create a, it was meant to be a catalyst that created a reaction, a domino, a chain reaction of events that led to civil unrest worldwide. Whether it's, he's trying to do a Muslim ban, or all of the rest of the pieces of the deep state, including Antifa that was running the streets wild at the time. It was meant to create a division so deep within this country that it sent us into the civil war they're trying to activate now. Those are the forces that we are up against. Draining the swamp isn't just as easy as lock her up. It is activate their new world order machine, get them to the point where they're marching the people into the ovens, except it's blanks that we've loaded into their new world order machine. The CV cooties is a big blank. All you had to do was wear a mask. But by the time this is over, you'll all agree. See, six months ago, the same people that would mock and, and ridicule the tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist are now looking toward him to say, what's going on? How come I don't recognize my world anymore? This seems to all be aligning up with everything you've tried to tell me over the years that I disregarded and looked the other way. Here's the other thing I said. You can't catch up with 20 years of education. You can soften your heart and ask God to bring those data points into a dot-to-dot -dot picture that makes some sense. You can't make up for 20 years of apathy and indifference and willful ignorance of the truth. For many people, it's too little too late. But in a major way, <clears throat> this whole thing <clears throat> is allowing each person to decide where they will stand in the cultural distillation process, which petri dish they're going to end up in through their actions and their behavior, and which are dictated by your heart and mind. Many people have not exercised their own independent thought processes over the years enough to be able to utilize it now and trust their own thought processes. So they just go along with the group, and as the group splits up into different camps, they don't know which way to go. They're running from this one to that one, and they think they're just going to sit on the fence, wait till the dust settles, and whoever's left standing, that's my side! That's the 80% that got to go. I'm going to include a link in the description where I previously basically described and explained exactly what I am now, that everything that's happening now is the precursors that are necessary as a catalyst to get everyone agreeing through the problem-reaction-solution Hegelian dialectic or dialectical materialism through these conversations we're having, through the dialect, this will allow a world to materialize around us where we're all on the same page. Because prior to now, half of them didn't think there was a deep state, and the other half that did know there's a deep state were divided because half of them like it, and they think that they're on the winning team if they can just rein in everyone else under this totalitarian dictatorship. The compliance of California is the culture that's trying to spread its tentacles into all the other states. That's the culture. Consciousness expressed through behavior of a group of people. Culture. Compliance-ocracy, I've described as the California culture where everyone has lost their freedoms. There are so many rules and regulations and bylaws and protocols that they all have to go by every day. I identified this long time ago. They've all lost control over their own life through the regulations that they have to live under, the way they compensate for that and try and feel some sort of feeling of control is to henpeck someone else and tell you, you're out of line. I noticed this when I'd go to a gas station and some customer would say, hey, that's employees only over there. Or, hey, didn't you read the sign? You're supposed to do this instead of that. And I'm like, you're just a customer here, right? Well, yeah, but you, you, the sign says, and no, no, no. And so you've taken it upon yourself to enforce the policies of this corporation while you're in here as a customer. And I saw this happening all around. Because they've lost their own freedoms and their own feeling of independence and the uh, ability to dictate their own life 
They want to dictate your life. And so they turn to the person next to them. The compliance rewards people for compliance and promotes you if you can extract compliance out of other people. Then you become a manager. Or you move up the chain and the ladder in the corporation. But you got to start by showing how good you are at your own level of compliance. And then you get rewarded for that. And then you get promoted and even greater rewards if you show that you can force compliance out of other people. This is why I can't go to California. I haven't been able to for many years now. But now that same culture of compliance a society where people are rewarded and promoted through their ability to comply with arbitrary, obscure, nebulous regulations that come out of nowhere. You don't think for yourself. You don't have to say, does this make sense? Is it moral or not? You just comply. And the more nebulous and bizarre and totally out of this world and nonsensical the regulation, the more compliant the people become after you've implemented and enforced it because if they'll go along with this, then they'll go along with anything. If they'll go along with something that makes zero sense... Well, then they'll go along with anything from this point forward. So that compliance culture is attempting to spread its tentacles. And that is how it's being allowed to thrive and flourish. And that is how it will fall under its own weight. Those of us who are willing and able to retain our own freedoms will choose to do so. So the answer or the question isn't what are we going to do? It's what are you going to do individually? In your own life, there is no macro solution here. It's a personal micro solution. Internally, individually, each person will declare themselves through their own behavior with actions that speak louder than words, and they will identify their true colors, and they will let them show through their actions and behaviors which Petri dish they belong in. And it is absolutely fair because it is a process of self-selection. You choose for yourself. As for me and my family, I know not what you choose, but as for me, I have no group to identify with. And those groups that think that they all choose and think and believe the same are going to be split over this. You may have to leave some family and friends behind if you want to be in the Petri dish of individuals because groups are filled by people who have an adherence to the group and feel safer within the group. Groups are filled by group thinkers. The Petri dish I'm going to end up in will have a lot of other people, a lot like myself, with a consciousness that expresses itself and turns into a thriving culture of individuals. What what, What does the terrorist training manual warn against in America? Highly motivated individuals? Something like that. That is the number one threat for the domestic terrorist of the future, according to the training manuals of, I believe it was the FBI. Highly motivated individuals. And if you want to end up in a group like that with others, then you're going to have to be willing to abandon the group. Because groups are filled with people who want to be part of the group more than they want to be an individual. At this point, time is on our side because all of their plans have been activated. They're running full steam ahead toward the finish line. They're no longer using their baby steps technique, their totalitarian tiptoe, where they creep toward the end zone with little baby steps at a time. Now they're on a full run. They also used to have the cloak of thinking that these different things are disconnected. We now know that the CV cooties is directly related to the riots, especially when you have Oregon come out and say that non-whites are exempt from the mandatory face mask order. Let that sink in. In Trump's latest rally, he indicated that they are exaggerating the severity of this and the numbers in one little sentence where he said, yeah, this boy's got the sniffles. He'll be fine in 10 minutes. But they'll be like, oh, that's a case. That's one. Add him to the list. In that one sentence, he indicated that the boy has the sniffles. He'll be fine in 10 minutes. But they, whoever he was referring to, are like, oh, well, that's a case. That's another one. That's one. 